<laughs> um, my inspiration from this call came from Angie Lee, which if you guys have any idea who that is, I had no idea who that was. Um, and if you are on my team, you know that Caitlin actually, um, posted in our team page like a couple days ago and was like, guys, I found this podcast and I'm like in love with her. Like if your homework for the rest of the night, maybe not the rest of the night, but for after this call is to go look her up. Um, I don't know. I haven't gotten far. I literally started like yesterday and I'm already like four episodes in. Um, but I don't know exactly what she started as, but she started as a network marketer and it sounds like she maybe started with like maybe even Beachbody, um, or like herbal life or something, maybe even like Arbonne, something that had to do with health and fitness. I think because she talks a lot about health and fitness coaching. Um, but that's not really where her, she's getting like her income right now. I don't even know if she's still a coach, but it sounds like she used to be. So she has a lot of knowledge. Um, and she's just, she has a great personality. Um, I just started like kind of following her on Instagram a little bit, which I also recommend because it's good to see what other women that are maybe not necessarily beach body coaches, but have a similar goal that we do are doing on their Instagram. Um, and it's funny because if you ask me, her Instagram isn't like perfect. It's not like gorgeous. It's not something that I would be like, oh wow, that's like, um, goals, but clearly she's doing something right. Cause she's fairly new in her career. She's already a millionaire. She only has like less than 50,000 followers. Um, but if you can tell I'm like girl crushing on her. So anyways, so she had this podcast and, um, it was very similar to exactly what I'm going to be talking about tonight. And it's where I got my inspiration. Um, but I'm kind of gearing it a little bit more specifically towards us. So, um, with that being said, I'm going to start sharing my screen and we are going to talk about, <laughs> six reasons your business is not moving forward, or at least maybe, maybe it's moving forward, but maybe it's not moving as quickly as you want it to. Sorry, I'm going to take a drink. Really quick. Okay, so the very first reason is that you haven't identified your ideal customer. And so what I recommend to do this is think of a problem and think of a solution. So to do that, think of, you know, the easiest way to do that is to say, okay, when I said yes to this opportunity, what was my problem? And what was the piece of this business? Or maybe you didn't start as a coach. Maybe you started as a challenger and then you became a coach. So kind of think of like both pieces of that. But when you started with Beachbody, um, what was the solution offered to you that made you say yes? I hope that makes sense. Um, like for me, I was feeling completely unfulfilled in my life. And I didn't feel like it, I felt like I was stuck and I felt like I was, you know, 25 years old and my life was what it was going to be forever. And, um, and it was a, what on paper, it was a really good life, but it wasn't what I wanted necessarily for my future. And so when Beachbody was presented to me, I was able, sorry, if you guys aren't muted, you need the help. Um, but I saw this as an opportunity to do something more with my future and with my life. And that's exactly what it has been for me for the last year. And so um, I know some of you, maybe it's you had tried every single fad diet or everything out there and um, you never thought you would have a solution to living a healthy lifestyle and then you found this and it's changed your life. So think really deeply about what it was for you so that you can speak to that for other people. I hope that makes sense. Okay. Number two, you're not asking enough. And this is a huge one. And this is like, I think this is what a lot of us get so freaked out about is having conversations and inviting people into this opportunity. And something that I want to tell you guys is that you know, an invite is from you to another person. Um, a conversation is obviously from you to another person, but it's also through your social media. 
I hope that makes sense. Okay, it's showing me that everybody's muted. But Sorry, you guys. I was missing an entire page of people. That's why. Um, okay, I think everybody can see now. <laughs> Anyways, so um, so this also means you know going on your story, telling your on your Instagram story, telling your story, talking about who you are, sharing your life, sharing your journey, sharing everything about it, and um, telling people you have a solution for them. So once you have, and you'll see that literally all of this goes back to that very first slide. So I hope you guys wrote that down. Um, if you haven't, take a second, get a notebook, um, write that down. You need to figure out your problem and figure out your solution. Because again, I will be talking a lot about that. And it's something that I don't want you guys to forget. Um, so if you're constantly talking about and posting about your past problem and what your solution now is, somebody is going to relate to you. And something that you will hear over and over and over and over and over again, and I'm going to tell you again, is that you have to be specific. Um, so you, you're not going to attract people necessarily through the products. Maybe you are, um, and that's definitely going to be a piece of it but people are attracted to you. So figuring out how to tell your story is so important. I can't even stress it enough. I can't tell you the amount of interaction I get on, you know, posts where I'm talking about how I used to um, stand in my kitchen and eat an entire like thing of ice cream and then blah, 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 whatever, move on to my fast forward to my life now. Then I get when, you know, I post a picture and I'm like, um, you know, oh, I have, I'm opening spots in my boot camp. Who wants to join me? Like, honestly, the pictures and the posts when I'm telling a story do so much better than when I'm promoting myself or my product. Um, and I think that's something that's really, really important to talk about. And that being said, the call to actions, like the hard call to actions where, um, where you are promoting each body, not necessarily using that name, but when you're promoting what we have to offer, those are important too, so that people understand that you have something when they see your post about the thing that they really, really relate to. So then they can say, oh, she has that solution. She's not just talking about what happened to her. She can help me. And then they can reach out to you. Or at the same time, when you reach out to them and you say, hey, I really appreciate that you're always following me and I really appreciate that you're always constantly like keeping up with my Instagram and what's going on or with my story and what's going on in my life. I appreciate it so much. They, they know, they remember that you're a real person. They remember, and I'm kind of getting ahead of myself, so I'm actually going to stop there, but keep that in mind. Um, and don't be afraid to present the opportunity, um, whether that is a general um, call to action post or something on your story or whether it is um, whether it is a direct invite in somebody's inbox saying hey do you want to join my challenge group because I think that you would love the accountability or you would fit in so well with all the other girls um, I would love to be able for us to work together I would love for us to be able to hold each other accountable and something I want to tell you is that if you believe in this and I if you guys can tell, I know there's comments. I'm actually, I'm not going to look at them just yet because I'm literally a fool. Um, so if you guys are like me and you are head over heels, completely die hard for our programs and the things we have to offer, this is simple. You don't feel weird. You don't feel bad. You don't feel salesy. You don't feel sleazy if you're asking for people because you're showing them that this has changed your life in a certain way. You're showing them that this is real, a real thing. Um, and that's why consistency is so freaking important because if you take a week off and you go completely MIA, people are going to see that and they're going to think, well, you know, she used to like post a lot and she used to like tell her story a lot, but then she like disappeared. And now she's asking me if I want to join her, but I don't know what if she disappears on me. And then what if like I sign up and then I don't have somebody there for me? Like, that's not what I want. People realize that and maybe they don't, but they realize it subconsciously because they'll remember the other coach that they follow that didn't do that, that didn't disappear. So do not stop being consistent. Okay, I'm gonna check. I'll check the, the chat just in case. Okay, no questions. So I think we're I think we're okay. Okay. Um number three. 
<clears throat> um, you're not clear on your offer. So this is important. And again, it goes back to the very, very, very beginning. Um, you have to be confident. You have to know what the solution is that you have. You have to be passionate. You have to like what you're doing. Um, and the best way to do this is to really reflect and say, okay, first of all, in a generic sense, what is it that you have to offer? What do you have um, that will help other people? And that could be a lot of things. You know, it could be anything in the coach opportunity and it could be anything in um, like the challenge group opportunity, whether it's the fitness side or the business side, you have a lot to offer. And you really need to hone in onto what the, what the, the specific things about that that attracted you are so that you can attract your ideal customer. Um, and again, your solution and like how that excites you. So how that makes you passionate, how that brings you to want to talk about it, to want to continue with your business um, because that excitement goes to other people. And um, you know, every single sneak peek I do, honestly, the most consistent comment I get every single time is, wow, you are so passionate. Wow, your energy is contagious. And the reason is because I truly love this. And if I sat here, okay, if I was sitting here and I said, number three, you're not clear on your offer. Be clear and confident. What do you have to offer? What excites you? Tell me you would know any of the things that I just said. No, because you'd be like, wow, this girl's so boring. She clearly doesn't care what she's saying. She clearly doesn't care about any of this stuff. She's just saying it to say it. She just wants my money. That's literally what you would think. That's how like people start to figure things, like make notes in their head because they're like, well, if she's not passionate, clearly it's not that good, right? So you need to, and you know, maybe every single piece of this, maybe every single program, maybe every single little bit of this isn't your jam. Think about it. We have so many different programs. We have so many different things to offer. Of course, we're not all going to have the, sa the, the same favorite program. That just makes sense. Of course not. Some people love cardio. Some people love weightlifting. Some people like a mix of both. And that's okay. And that's what makes you you. But you have to figure out what it is. And I'm not just, just only talking about programs, but every little de detail of this business, you have to figure out all of the small things that bring you passion, that bring you excitement, that make you want to keep going, that make you want to work hard, that make you want to take, make the sacrifices that this business sometimes takes. And that's what you need to portray to people. Number four, I guess I forgot that this was right next or else I would have, um, I was thinking it was a little bit later, but um, lack of passion. Clearly, I just talked about all of that. Um, so, but kind of an, another side of this is, and you, you probably hear us talk about this every once in a while, but I know that, especially like Angie, Allie, even me a little bit, um, kind of going down the line, we all tend to attract more um, coaches. And that's not true for everybody and that's not true for every team. There are a lot of teams that recruit way, 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 way more challengers than coaches. Um, but you know, for me, for Allie, for Angie, um, it seems to be the opposite. So I want you guys to really think about if, and maybe you don't have one, but think about, is there, is there one thing that you are more passionate about? I love talking to coaches. Um, I love finding coaches because I, for me, it's both pieces of this business that changed my life. It has given me a vision. And that's what I love about the business that I know that when I have kids, I can stay home with them someday. Um, but it's also changed my life physically because I have, I'm that girl that did every single yo-yo diet or I mean, um, fad diet. And I yo-yoed my whole entire life. And I never thought I could be in shape until I found Beachbody. So for me, coaches are what I'm really passionate about because I believe that marrying the two is so important. However, a lot of people start as a challenger and that's where their true passion lies. And they want to they want to find challengers um, that that want to work on themselves and then show them 
the value of coaching. And that's okay too. Um, if you don't necessarily have a preference yet, that's okay too. But if you do, maybe really think about that, reflect on it a little bit and say, okay, maybe my energy is best spent finding X or Y. Um, because it's, it's important that you have a passion. And maybe that's not necessarily where it needs to go, but that's something to think about. That's kind of an example. Um, and again, your, your heart just has to be there. Your heart has to be in everything that you do. And of course, there's going to be times that um, you are doing things that you don't necessarily want to do or that aren't your favorite to do. And that's normal in every business. But you have to find the things that excite you, the things that make you want to move forward, because that's what's going to get you five years down the road as a stay-at-home mom in a million-dollar mansion. Okay, this might be my favorite one. I don't know. I like them all. Um, number five, <clears throat> you're not hearing no enough. And that is literally so true. We are so scared of hearing no, but it gets, I promise you this because I'm a year in and I'm just now starting to figure it out and I wish I would have figured it out a lot sooner. Um, hearing no is not a bad thing. And you need to get to the point where when someone says no to you, that's okay because A, you have them on your list and you know that someday they're probably going to say yes. And B, you've, you've asked so many people that that no doesn't matter. Um, you know that it's not their time. You know that you have something to offer that no, but you know it's, they're just not ready. And that's okay because think about it this way. If someone said, okay, you should start doing this workout. You should do insanity. You're like, I don't know. I, actually, okay, I'm gonna use this exact example because this was my, um, this was my roommate. This has literally happened to me like four years ago. Um, my roommate had insanity. She said, let's do insanity. And I was like, no, nah, girl, that sounds awful. And she was like, okay, let's do T25. And I was like, okay. So we started doing it. We finished it. I didn't really like it, um, but I finished it with her because, you know, it's 25 minutes. It's not that hard. After we finished, she said, okay, let's do insanity. And I was like, no, like, no, that sounds horrible. And she was like, come on, let's just do it. And I was like, no, I don't want to do it. That sounds terrible. I, I don't like that kind of workout. I don't want to do insanity. And she was like, let's do it. Let's do it. <clears throat> so guess what? I finally did it. I half-assed it the whole time. I did not give it my all. I did not see results. Um, and granted, I wasn't a coach at that time. So I really had no reason to put my all into it. And I got nothing out of it. It was a waste of time. It was a waste of energy. And it was a waste of time that I could have been doing something else. So <laughs> think about that. When somebody tells you no, they're not going to put their energy into it. So they're either A, going to quit, or B, they're just going to give up on themselves. And then that makes you feel bad. When someone that you put energy and love into quits on themselves, that hurts you too. And that hurts worse than them saying no from the beginning. Um, so when it is their time, you will be there for them because you're following up with them every single month. <clears throat> or at least every single quarter or every single launch or whatever it is, you're letting them know every time you have something new to offer because maybe that's something that they now want. And actually they said that on the national wake up call this or yesterday, um, that they, they never give up on people because maybe the person that had no interest in lift four would be all over transform 20. Duh, that just makes sense. So that's something that you have to always keep in mind that the no, I'm going to say it. You guys have heard it a thousand million times. A no is not a no, it's a not right now. Um, and there is a book called Go For No. I have not read it. I plan on reading it. It will be my next Audible if I can, you know, pull myself out of this podcast. Um, <clears throat> but I recommend that every single one of you guys read it. I've heard nothing but amazing things. Again, I haven't read it, so I can't completely recommend, recommend it. But from other network marketers, from beach body coaches, from so many people, I have heard that it's an incredible book. So if that's one of your downfalls, if that's something that you really struggle with is getting hurt by the people that tell you no, um, then I definitely say read it. And um, one thing that I, I haven't really completely specifically said is that if you are not hearing a lot of no's, you're not having enough conversations. When you're hearing a ton of no's, let's say you're hearing like, 
15 no's a day. Honestly, I probably hear about that. I probably hear about 15 to 20 no's or maybes. You know, maybes almost always turn into no. So I hear probably 15 to 20 every single day. And if you're not hearing a lot, let's see, say you're hearing one no a day or one no a week. That just means you're not having enough conversation. And I'm telling you, it's crazy. But the more no's you get, the, easy, the, the easier they are to take. Um, so, okay, before I move on to the last one, I'm going to check this. Make sure there's no questions. Um, uh, is no better than being ghosted? That's the only one I think of. So um, it's really funny you say that because yes and no. At the beginning, I remember when I first started and I wasn't having a ton of conversations and I knew the names of every single person I was talking to. So back then, it was like a ghost felt horrible. It was like a shot in the stomach versus like, falling down on your knee as a no. Like it was way worse. But honestly, being ghosted is for me personally, and this is going to be different for everybody. For me personally, I would rather be ghosted um, just because I'm not scared to reach out to them again. And that's something that I just started recently was, um, and this, this sounds really bad, but to be completely honest, it's like, you know, if I, if I hear, and this is only because I've learned this, like within the last month or so, if I hear a no, we continue the conversation and, um, I have to make myself not try to talk them into it. And that's something that I'm working on right now. Don't try to talk people into it. As soon as you're trying to talk someone into it, you've already like failed yourself. So if someone says no, explain the objection. So, um, don't be afraid to tell them, you know, to talk about their objection, but once you have, you know, tried to squash their objection and they're still saying no, don't push and push and push because nobody wants to hear that. Um, but I have recently started, and I didn't used to do this. I recently started, if someone ghosts me, I still, I, the next month, I'll still message them again. Um, especially if we've talked in the past or especially if they're still watching my story or they're still liking my photos, just because they ghosted me, they clearly are still watching me. So I'll, I'll message them again. And I've had quite a few people say, Hey, I'm really, really sorry. Um, I didn't even realize that you messaged me and maybe they're lying. Maybe they're not. It doesn't matter, but they'll say, I'm sorry. I didn't realize you met, you messaged me. Um, I'd like to hear more information now. And I asked them in different words, but I asked them the same exact question both times, but the last time it just, they just weren't right. Um, sorry. I hope that actually answered your question. Sorry. I made a sip. Okay. One more and then I have a bonus. Um, so number six, you're afraid of what others think of you. And honestly, this is one of those that's just like, you know what? We all feel it. We've all been there. And it's something that we all see in every facet of our life, you know, um, from that shirt that I wore that to that party and you know somebody looked at me funny and I didn't know if that was why to I'm starting my own business and not everybody understands network marketing so maybe they're going to judge me like every end of the spectrum we all care what people think and um it's just natural it's human nature um it's something that I think is very very good to try to overcome and it's something that I know I personally reflect on a lot. It's hard. It's difficult for everyone. I'm sure it's even difficult for, you know, Angie and Melanie Mitro. I'm sure. But guess what? They've mastered it. They have gotten a lot better. And um, I want to tell you that you will get better too. You just have to believe in yourself. And it all comes back to that. If you can believe in yourself and you can believe in what you have to offer and what you're doing and you you know that you will provide value and you will provide everything that your, your clients and your coaches need from you. And yeah, none of us are perfect, but if you know that you're going to give it your best shot and you know that you care about the person on the other screen, then you don't have to care what others think because you know that you're impacting other people's lives in the most positive way ever. You're helping them feel confident. You're helping them gain the energy that they didn't think they could have running around with their kids. You're giving, you're giving them the potential for freedom, financially, time, everything like that. Like 
You have a gift and I don't want you guys to forget that. So this is why, again, it's so important that you see your passion. Um, and as people start to see that, and you know, I'll never remember a long time ago, Deanna was pretty, pretty like new ish. And, um, she went live in the, um, team navigate page. <laughs> and she talked about how somebody signed up. Um, I don't remember if it was a coach or a challenger and, um, they were like ready to go, like no questions asked because, and she like worked with them because she talked about it constantly. She talked about coaching. She talked about how much she loved it and she didn't do it in a gross icky way. She did it in like casual conversation because it was what's on her mind. You know that we talk about the things we're excited about, right? So if you're excited about this, you're going to talk about it and, and it's going to be natural. And so people aren't going to think it's weird, right? Does that make sense? I know that when I first started, I had the same exact thoughts. <clears throat> it was right around the holidays. And like two weeks after I started was Thanksgiving. So I had just like did my coming out posts and all that kind of stuff. And I was with my family and they're like, what's this thing you're doing? And I still wasn't quite confident about it, but I did have a tiny, I had like a one week transformation that literally within eight days, I could already see a transformation in my body. So I had a little bit of excitement, um, but I didn't understand the business completely. And I, and I still was like a little bit wishy-washy when I was talking about it. Um, and it was like, yeah, you know, this thing and, and I don't understand it completely, but blah, 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 blah. And, um, and I, I noticed because I was with my same group of family a couple of weeks ago and I noticed that they were asking similar questions that they had the year before. And I was, it was, it was like an out of body experience. I was watching, I felt like I was watching myself talk about it and my confidence was so much higher because I had I've been changed so much in the last year that I talked about it with ease and I talked about it and I could see, I could, the, their reaction was so much more positive this time just because I was, I was confident about it. Um, and so if you can start to, you know, talk about it more and more and start by talking about it with people that you're really comfortable with, you know, I talk about it with my mom and my boyfriend constantly. And so I have practice talking about it. And so I know exactly like what to say. And so it doesn't feel weird. And I'm not, you know, and okay, I'm going to pause because this kind of goes into my bonus tip. You're not being authentic. And this is literally so freaking important um, because you don't want to be a robot. And I think that that's where, that's where the biggest mistake at the beginning of our business happens. Um, and I don't like to, I don't really like to say that because I don't think anything is necessarily a mistake, but I think that there are things that we can get on the front end of so that, you know, we learn from them. So like, I think I try to use the things that I learned big lessons from and give those to my team. And I know that all leaders do that. Um, and that's why we have, you know, these incredible resources that it's important that we use because someone like Allie or someone even like Angie has learned so much in this business. So there are things that we can learn from them. And um, that's so important. And that's why we have mentors and that's why we have these team calls and things like that. Um, but, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, but it's, it's important that you are you. Like, I don't know how else to say that, but like you have to be, you um when you're having conversations when you're making your posts be vulnerable be be authentic um because you know if you're if you're on your social media and your hair is always perfect and your makeup is always done and you're always you always have on your um your lashes and your hair is always curled and you're wearing perfect um perfect outfits and you're talking about how great your life is and you're talking about all the perfect things and you're talking about how happy you are and you're talking about how you never get in fights with your husband and how your dog never barks. Like people are like, wow, I can never be her because clearly that's not real. And then people can't relate to you. And so they don't want to work with you. Of course. <laughs> I know that, um, and I want you guys to think about this because I know this is something that I did a lot. So hopefully you guys can relate to it. That what, before I started coaching, I had a lot of fitness influencers that I followed on, on Instagram. They had, you know, hundreds of thousands of, of followers and stuff like that. And there was one in particular and she basically had like the body of my dreams. So she was like my favorite. 
Um, honestly, I don't even remember her name anymore, but um, she, Valentina something, I think, but, and she was a trainer. She had, she did online classes. Um, I think hers was all, hers was all personal though. She didn't work with the company. And um, she would post, hey, I have, I have spots open. I'm coaching. If you like DM me, if you want. And I would always think like, yeah, right. Like, why would I, why would I message you? Clearly, I can never, ever be like you. Your life is perfect. Like, I don't even want to talk to you because I'm afraid you're going to like scoff at me. Or I'm afraid, you know, if I, if I reach out to you, you're going to completely ignore me because why would you talk to little old me? And so I know it's a little bit different. I know that's kind of an extreme. I think she had like, you know, 600,000 followers or something, but people will think that about you too. Or on the flip side of it, they'll think that you're lying. Like say you're at the very, very beginning of your life or of your um, business, right? <clears throat> and let's say you have like 600 followers and it's mostly people you know, and you go on there and you're talking about how perfect everything is and how perfect your life is and how um, you've never missed a workout ever and how you never, ever eat um, any cheat meals and how you, um, wh whatever, how everything is perfect. People are going to be like, nah, -uh. I was literally just with you like two days ago and we went and got ice cream or nah, -uh. like you were just complaining to me about how upset you were that you got in a huge fight with your mom. Like, I know those are two like big extremes, but I want you to think about both of them. And I want you to think about everything in between too, but it's just, I can't stress enough how important it is that you don't forget about you because you are the most important piece of your business. Um, Beachbody is just there to supplement you. Beachbody is just there to do the leg work um, or like the background stuff. You are there to, to be the face, to be the brand. Um, and so if you're, not, if you're not vulnerable and you're not showing people your real you, they can't relate to you. So um, I know I touched on this a little bit, but just with also, um, don't be transactional. So not only in your posts, but in your, in your, in your conversations with people, talk to the other person, like they're another person, like they're another human being, like they're somebody just like you, because guess what? If they don't like the way you're talking, I mean, don't be like rude. Um, but if they don't like the way you interact, if they don't vibe with you, if you guys don't click, that's okay because you're not who they need and they're not who you need. And like, I know we all get so freaked out about that, like, especially when we're at the beginning and it's like, uh, no, I want everybody. I'm going to be like, try to be absolutely perfect and like completely PC and whatever, blah, blah, blah. People don't relate well to that. Um, if I, how many of you respond to the messages that sound like a freaking robot? None of them. And if you do, you did once and you're like, wow, what was I thinking? I'm never doing that again. I'm never making that mistake again. Um, or the people, you know, I can't tell you how many people have reached out to me like, oh my gosh, you have such beautiful hair. Have you ever thought of using blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, oh my gosh. Yeah. I have thought about it because 14 other people sent me the exact same message. Um, so try to get creative and something that I've recently started doing now don't copy this word for word because I don't want the same person to get, you know, however many people are on here, um, that many messages. But um, something that I've started doing is I don't even introduce myself as anything that has to do with fitness. So when somebody starts following me and I, I thank them for following me or I say something about, you know, them adding me or coming to my page, I just say, hey, you know, I love spreading the love. I love sharing joy. Um, I love interacting with others. Thank you. I'm sending good vibes to you. I'm sending happiness to you. Um, I hope you're having a wonderful day. A lot of people don't respond to me, but guess what? Freaking a lot of people do. And more people do than when I used to say, hey, thank you so much for following me on my fitness journey. Um, I'm really trying to inspire others. So I really hope that you, um, you find some inspiration or motivation from my page. Like I, I did get some people that, and I, I got a good amount of people that would say, thank you so much. You're so like, you're so inspiring. Um, you make me want to work out right now, but I get a lot more people now that say, thank you so much for that message. You just made my day. Thank you so much for that message. That's so sweet. Or like, wow, I can't believe, you know, you really reached out to me and said that. Thank you so much. Like people, 
people respond to that so much better. And then guess what? I'll start having another conversation. I'll start a, something else. And then it can, it can slowly evolve into an invitation or into finding out what their goals are and things like that. Okay. <clears throat> I'm so sorry. I'm so thirsty. I feel like I've been talking so fast. But honestly, that's it. I'm going to look at the comments real quick. Um, I will actually, I'll stop sharing because again, I will, I'll post that because I really did say like basically everything that was, um, that was in it. Okay. Any questions? Any questions? Um, okay. I don't see. Exactly. 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 Allie. Thank you. Yes. You don't do the invite right away. And you know, if you, if you lead with something that has to do with health and fitness, there are so many of us now that people know. People are like, oh, okay, well, I know where this is going. You know what I mean? Like, you know how sometimes you can just tell and it's like, eh, I don't want to respond to them. Like, I know where this is going. I've gotten a message like that. Um, so think about something creative. Think of something that maybe you um, wouldn't, wouldn't normally say that maybe doesn't sound like something that seems like it would be a good intro. Just try it. See what happens. Tiana, I'm trying to unmute you, but it's not working. It's making me like accept your unmute. I was like, what the heck? <laughs> um, but like for newer coaches, I mean, I'm just starting to finally get my groove with social media, like what my posts look like, my picture wise and like filters and all of that. So you're like the guru for creativeness. So what is your advice for like newer coaches that don't really know what to post when it comes to like photos? Like, should they be posting photos? Should they be posting like words in their photo, like as their photos? Like what should their photos look like? Um, so okay. attract people. Yeah. <clears throat> so I know that there are, okay. I think you should always be in your photo. Um, that's just my opinion. Um, a great example of an exception is actually Deanna's picture from today. I think that her Sweet. picture today, yeah, I, I think it was today. I saw it today. Um, it was her with her coffee mug and her tree in the background. And it, I literally thought that it was, and I don't mean this in a bad way. This is going to sound bad. I, I don't mean it in a bad way. Um, I literally thought it was like an ad. Like I thought that it was advertising, like, I don't know, Christmas trees. I don't know. Uh, oh, there, yeah, you can see it now. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't do it justice, but like, if you guys follow her, go, go look at it. Um, <clears throat> but it's by Allie. Um, but it's so, it's, it's really beautiful, but she has a spectacular filter. Um, and so I caution you to share photos of things that aren't you, that aren't scroll stopping beautiful. Um, same thing with food, please, not even on your story please don't share ugly food. Like, please freaking don't share ugly food. It is the biggest pet peeve that I have. But like, if you saw a, like a plate of like brown mush and somebody was like, this is so healthy. You'd be like, wow, I never want to ever be healthy. Like that's disgusting. So like, just be careful of that. I don't even know that I would recommend sharing food, even if it's beautiful on your feed. If it's, if it, that's like your thing, um, I know there are some like vegan pages that share a lot of food and it's like really beautiful. Like that's different. Um, but, like if it's not your thing, I wouldn't do it. As far as, um, words like text. Also, I just be cautious of it. Don't do it like every other picture or anything like that. I would say either a, don't do it more than in like a span of like nine pictures. So like if you have like your nine squares, I wouldn't do it in more than one of those. Or, or I see successfully sometimes um, that like with like a pattern, like, you know, when you like see a pattern, it takes a lot of work though. So you have to dedicate yourself if you're going to do it. But you'll, have, you'll see somebody that has like a photo of them, um, text, and then like a photo of them and their kid. And that's like their pattern or it could just be like a photo of them, the text and a photo of them again or whatever. Um, but you have to post, I think, okay, I don't, I'm bad at whatever, but I think you would have to post three times a day to do that. I think 
um, to make it work. Maybe not, I don't know, but, or at least twice, I think. Um, so if you're not willing to commit to something like that, I would say don't do it. Um, if you see something or you see a quote that you think is really, really, really fantastic, I would either A, use it at the very beginning of your caption or just don't overuse them. I hope that answers your question. I hope it wasn't too long. And as far as like what to say in your posts, think about your story. Think about, I would make like a brain, you made like a brain dump when you first started. You made a brain dump of like the five things that, um, that you want to talk about and that's good, but take that a step further and make a brain dump of the problems you've gone through and your solution. And there's probably going to be more than one. You're probably going to have a really strong one for coaching and a really strong one for fitness. And um, something that I actually meant to put in the slides um, <clears throat> is that make sure you have a focus. Make sure you're not promoting too many things at once. Um, so you don't, you can do it a little bit differently, but I know that this is how like some of us do it. This is how like Allie does it and stuff too. Um, but maybe take it week by week and say, okay, this week I'm going to promote coaching. Next week I'm going to promote, um, challenge groups. And that way you're not confusing people. That being said, if there's a day, like say you're doing a coaching week, but you really want to do like a transformation Tuesday, like that's fine, but just don't do like an even mix of both because people are going to get confused and be like, wow, all she does is like sell all these things. Um, and I think it's important for people to see like, no, I want to help this specific niche right now. And then next week I want to help this. Um, so anyways, I hope that's helpful for you, helpful for you guys. Cause I know that it took me a while to really catch my stride for my posts. And you know, I wish Rayleigh was on, um, she asked me about this today. If you're comfortable with it and if you can get yourself to do it, talk about the down and dirty, talk about the, the scary stuff, talk about the stuff that you don't want to talk about. And maybe you're not specifically saying what happened in your life. Um, but think of a general way to talk about the struggles you've gone through, even if they have nothing to do with coaching. Um, even if they have nothing to do with fitness, think of a way to talk about them because more than likely, either you're going through them right now, or they made you a better person for some reason. And maybe someone needs to hear that. Maybe somebody needs to hear that even though they're going through a really shitty divorce right now, it's going to be okay. And they can catch their stride again. And there is a community of women out there that will be there for them. Um, and you know what? Maybe they don't sign up as a coach. Maybe they don't sign up as a challenger. Maybe they never even talk to you. But maybe they read your post and they find hope in themselves. And that's really what we're here for is to help other people. Um, and we have to find ways to inspire people other than through fitness. Because it's really important that we're providing value aside from workout programs. Okay. Any other questions? Um, let me make sure nobody else. Okay. Looks like a lot of people left, so I will let it go here and I will stop recording.